digital transformation just keeps moving along at a very rapid pace and helping it along is Avnet. It is a global technology solutions provider based in Phoenix, Arizona. And joining me today for View from the Top is the CEO of Avnet, Bill Emilio. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. I appreciate being here. So many people know Avnet for electronic components, but you guys really do so much more now. Tell us about the company and what you do. I guess the best way to describe it would be this. I mean, think about having an idea, a great idea, and you write it down on the back of an envelope or a napkin. We can take that idea, go into pilot production, full-scale production, harden the design, and lo and behold, you got a product line. That's amazing. And it seems like that's the direction that a lot of companies are going. That's correct. I think the best way to think about it is that when we work with customers, we bring the world's technology in a cost-optimized, lead time-optimized way so they can have the best ability to be able to deliver their solutions to their customers. Avnet has a really rich history. Uh, there's not a lot of tech companies out there that can say that they're nearly 100 years old. I wonder if maybe you can share a little bit of the, the history of the company, where you started, and a little bit of the progression of the company. Can you believe 1921, we started right here in New York City, Radio City Row. And here we are today, a global powerhouse in 140 countries, 15,000 employees, and we went through so many different technology cycles. What I find fascinating is that if you think about just back to the year 2000 and how many companies were on the Fortune 500, 50% of them are no longer there. To live 100 years or almost 100 years is truly remarkable, a demonstration that we continue to learn how to adapt and change as the market changed around us. Avnet, you know, started long ago um, with radio parts, but now you guys, you're, you're into Bitcoin. That was something that happened a couple of months ago. You now take Bitcoin payments, is that right? Yeah, how we got into Bitcoin was we actually had some customers that were doing bit mining. So we were developing uh, parts for them that allowed them to do mining more effectively. And one of the ways they ask us is, can you, we pay with Bitcoins? And we said, of course you can. We didn't know how to do it at the time, but we quickly figured it out. So crypto is one way that Avnet is expanding. How or where do you see other areas where the company is going to expand? I think one of the most exciting areas is we all heard about the evolution that's happening with respect to IoT, or maybe even revolution, you could say, because by the year 2020, just in front of us, there'll be 20 billion devices connected. By 2025, there'll be 50 billion devices. And Avnet's right in the center of that. We were right in the epicenter of being able to provide a device, the gateway, the network, the cloud, the applications, the artificial intelligence to analyze the data and provide unique insights to customers. So let me give you, I think, a great example. We're working with a company called Vital, and we're actually building a device that allows you to take all your vital signs in three minutes, as opposed to when you go to a hospital and you, a crash cart comes out and it takes about 15 minutes to get all your vitals. And one of the killer apps associated with that product is a non-invasive glucose monitor. So can you imagine that you no longer have to prick your finger and now you can be able to get your glucose level or your sugar level and you can get it in less than three minutes. That's astounding. What are specific challenges that you deal with in your space? Well, we're always concerned about what's happening with the supply chain, whether it's weather conditions, et cetera, because we got to deliver product to our customer no matter if it's raining, shining, or what. So that's always a concern for us to say, how do we make sure we understand the supply lines and, and we're able to deliver it to our customers on a day-in, day-out basis? What about the global macro environment? Lots of concerns about Brexit, um, also China. And I know these were a couple of things that were mentioned in the recent earnings report. How does Avnet navigate these things? Our thought process is always this. We control what we can control, and we have contingency plans in place for things that we can't control. So let's take the two examples you brought up. China tariffs. So we had to put in place a strategy where we minimize the tariff exposure to our customers. For example, we used to ship all the product from China into the United States and then we would send it to uh, regions in the Americas, Canada, Latin America, South America. What we had to do is start direct shipping from Hong Kong to those other countries so they didn't pick up a tariff. Additionally, we work with our suppliers to make sure that if they had alternate sources in China and maybe in Vietnam or Malaysia or Thailand, that we would ship from those facilities into the United States versus shipping from China into the United States. So a lot of coordination of effort to make that happen. Yeah. Now, the other one you mentioned was Brexit. Brexit clearly caused an uncertainty in the market. We have 20% of our revenues from our business called Farnell that's in the UK. And clearly this past quarter, we saw a bit of a slowdown because of that. We're hopeful now that the date moved to October, that's created a little bit more certainty, and we're hopeful that there'll be a, a deal that occurs that will be a, not a hard Brexit, but a soft Brexit. 
or something better for us. You came to the helm at Avnet about three years ago. What did you see as your top priorities for the company? This was a great opportunity to transform a company through another technology way. And what I saw when, we, when I joined the company was this was an industry where our suppliers were consolidating quickly. I mean, if you look at the mergers and acquisitions over the last five years in the supplier space, they were gargantuan. So every time a supplier would consolidate, it would create more margin pressure on the industry. Sure. So if you look over the last 10 years, you'd see 400 basis points erode in margin. Mm -hmm. So that meant in order to be able to continue to have your profitability, you got to keep cutting costs, but you can't cut costs forever. So you got to do something different. And that's where you got to change and pivot to different revenue streams that are high growth, high margin, a la what we're trying to do with the Internet of Things. More of a focus on services, right? Of course. Rather than hardware or components. And exactly the reason why we bought a software company to build out our practice in the IoT space because it does give us reoccurring revenue, it's more service oriented, and allows us to do things that we weren't able to previously do. For example, we're able to now connect any device from any manufacturing right to the cloud. Are there any particular verticals where you see IoT really exploding? You can look at areas like smart factories, smart employees, you can think about automobiles, and you can think about precision medicine. I think all those are where you see great applications of IoT technology. When you did come to the helm at Avnet, you came with loads of experience. And just a brief recap, uh, you were at IBM for a considerable amount of time in different roles, uh, almost two decades, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you were also the CEO of Lenovo. And just before Avnet, you were with CHC Helicopters. So you have a wealth of experience, a lot in tech. How did all of that experience inform the way that you're leading the company now? Well, I've been privileged with having the opportunity to be part of transformation stories at all the companies that you mentioned. So I bring to the company a ability to have a transformation playbook that allowed us to be able to pivot the company from what our core strengths are, and I discussed how the margins have eroded for some time. Now we needed to be able to pivot to other higher margin, higher growth opportunities, and having a transformation playbook really helps out. Sounds like you really learned how to be agile and adapt. Exactly. I want to turn to something that's a little less corporate, and, and that is the charity work that you and your wife are involved in. Uh, do you want to tell us about that? We, we founded a charity in Cambodia and it was in Sam Reap, Cambodia. We lived in Asia for 10 years in Singapore, and when we moved over there, we wanted to do something significant. And Cambodia came calling. When she first visited there, she was with her best friend, and they were visiting the wonderful temples of Angkor Wat. And a little girl came up and tugged on her blouse and looked up at her in these dark, soulful eyes and said, can I have a dollar in perfect English? And she looked down at her and she said, what do you need a dollar for? And she said, I need a dollar to go to school. And she said, really, you got to pay to go to school? She said, yes. She says, well, I'll give you a dollar if you take me to see your schools this afternoon. So that afternoon, she visited her schools. And before she left, she was sponsoring a dozen or so girls. And she came back to Singapore and she said, I found the charity we're going to start. And that was the start of Caring for Cambodia. We have built 21 schools. We have 6,600 kids at any one time from pre-K to 12th grade. We've been at it for 16 years. Almost 70,000 kids have gone through the program really extraordinary. So you've been at Avnet now three years. Uh, you have introduced Bitcoin. You're pivoting the company to more, uh, more of a service-oriented model. Where would you like to see the company in, say, the next one, two, three years? I think we have a chance to really be the big first mover advantage in the IoT space. I think with the rapid growth there, we have an opportunity to be able to not only provide the devices, but we can provide the gateways, the networks, the cloud, the applications, content providers, and then expand that to other systems integrators so they can build on our platform. I think that's going to be a great source of revenue and growth for us in the future. And if I asked you, how are you rewriting tomorrow? What would you say? Well, taking Avnet from a distribution company to a technology solution provider. I think that's the most effective way to describe what we're going to do as a business moving forward. Well, I've really enjoyed speaking with you, Bill. Thanks so much for the time. Thank you very much. I've been speaking with Bill Emilio. He is the CEO of Avnet here at the NASDAQ. I'm Janie Yerman for View from the Top.